I have a Halloween costume idea for you. Is that and right? It's new, yeah, and this new guy in pop culture, his name Jack. That's his nickname, Jack. And you could totally be Jack's dad. You just need you just need a um, Houston Texans jersey. You think that's me? When you, yeah, you could you could be his dad for Halloween, and it would be hilarious. Brad and I are here talking about right, we're not- infinite banking. Right. Sounds like banking that would last forever. Right. Am I right, Brad? Now, What's this? Can you refresh us for it? people who right. might not have seen or heard of this stuff? Right. Just a just a quick refresher. You hadn't heard of infinite banking? Package it, will you? What are we talking about? Uh, the infinite banking concept is an alternative way. And my dog barks in the background. The infinite banking concept is an alternative way to personal finance. Most American will, when they need to buy a new car, buy a new house, break this on their kids, on Disneyland, whatever, they will put it on the credit card or they will go to the bank and they will borrow money. And whenever they borrow money from someone else, they pay an interest rate to someone else, right? The traditional American way to finance. And Nelson Nat, in his book, Becoming Your Own Banker, points out that the average American loses 34 and a half cents every dollar. 34 and a half percent of your personal wealth is being paid to interest charges to the third party financiers you borrow from. I agree. What the infinite banking concept does, it allows you to create your own personal form of finance, create your own personal bank, and recapture that 34 and a half cents that you're paying someone else with your own banking an alternative way to finance major person. Uh, why not just use the bank? Why do I need this alternative way? It's because of I'm losing all this wealth, you say. Right. right? And so, because, yeah, yeah last time we talked, you told me something about the bank, uh, the fractional. And I told my wife last night this. Uh, I'll let you explain it. But she was like, uh, what? You know, when, you know, where the bank uh-huh. takes our money and what do they do with it? Uh-huh. Yeah. So whenever you go deposit a dollar at the bank, then the bank legally has the right to loan out $10. Even though they really don't have $10 in their safe, for every dollar that you deposit, they can lend $10. So that's called the fractional lending, or lending reserve requirement. Recently, Biden listed. So now it's one to infinity. A bank can make any amount of loan, regardless of how much money they have in the thing. So, so has- okay, so if if we're talking about equality, mm-hmm. then that means I should be able to take my ten dollars and spend it as many times as I want. That would be equality. Yes. If I do that, though, then that's counterfeit, basically, right? Or that's some kind of fraud because how could I keep using the same ten bucks over? Correct. Or really what you would be able to do is just pencil in like seven zero to the end of your $10 bill until you have, a, you know, a hundred million dollars. I'm going to do that with my, with my next tax payment. I'm going to yeah. pencil it in and just be like, what? It's, I wrote it on the check. Yeah. Real. Exactly what the bank doing. It's literally exactly what the banks are doing, except instead of penciling it in with the magic marker, they just it is zero on the keyboard. Add is zero. Keyboard. So banks are allowed legally to loan out money that does not exist. So that causes, is one of the contributing factors to the inflation that we've seen within our economy lately. Because the, the, the supply of money is very important to an economy. Because money has a relationship to all other goods in the economy, right? That's right. That's right. If you want to blow it down, feel the same way. I think people, we'd all feel the same way. Okay. Like, all right. Yeah. No, it's probably better that we do boil it down to like a household level like that, right? I mean, that's really all I personally care about. Now, look, I'm not saying I don't care about the global economy and, and the, the I do. But let's face it, when it all comes down to it, if I'm at the grocery store, I'm open in my wallet, right? It's not anyone else's it's just that's what right so let's talk about that let's talk about you going to the grocery store and opening up your wallet so um 
Well, maybe four months ago, two, two years ago, you go to the grocery store and you could get 10, 12, 15 bags of groceries for a hundred, 150 bucks, right? Now you go to the grocery store and you get three bags of groceries for the same 100 bucks. And but everyone else is, you know, okay. But over time, isn't, doesn't, can you just say people are getting paid more? I mean, don't people get paid more to keep up with the rising costs? You know, this is where grandma will say, hey, but gas was 25 cents. Yeah, it was. And you got paid $8 a month, like, you know, or whatever. So what say you? Wages are not um, keeping up with inflation at all, historically. And it's hurting the middle class the most. It, it's wiping out the middle class savers the hardest. Because they are, they are more reliant on third-party finance, so they're losing that majority of their wealth the third party lenders at the same time goods are becoming way more expensive quicker than what the wages can rise to max right so over the past three years we have seen a total of about 12 percent inflation over those three years and that's a very conservative estimate right that's over the entire economy that's the cpi the government measurement the cpi doesn't take into account some consumer goods even though it's called the consumer price and if you don't take into account grocery into that into that inflation number, so that twelve percent you could probably actually call it thirty, but we'll call it twelve. People's real wages have not increased twelve percent over the past two or three years. In fact, they've gone down because of unemployment and uh, partial employment, not having full employment, as economists say. So, yeah. There is the pushback that wages rise with inflation, but that is part of it. It's not true, right? It doesn't keep up. Also, what the inflation does that harms the middle class is it, it causes bubbles. So we've all heard about economic bubbles expanding and then, and then a bubble bursting. And then we have like a 2008 housing crisis situation. So what the inflationary banks do is loan money that didn't previously exist. And then that money gets out in the economy and buys goods at a cheaper price, right? And so when they buy goods at a cheaper price, then they can go build things. Well, then when they build big houses, people don't actually have the means to buy those houses. And so it creates a bubble and the bubble collapses. The same thing happens in all sectors of the economy. Whenever you see a bubble burst, uh, the tech bubble was created with newly printed government money and loans to Silicon Valley. The savings and loan crisis in the 1980s was created by money printing in the 60s, 70s, and 80s after World War II, trying to get us out of, you know, that mess. The money printed for the Vietnam War in the 60s and 70s. None of the government operations are funded at 100%. We've always had a budget deficit since, like, Andrew Jackson, I think, was the, the seventh president of the United States, was the last president to operate on a balanced budget. So every single dollar that the government spends over budget, which right now is about $9 trillion a year, is buying goods away from me and you, or in other words, reducing our purchasing power personally on our household. That's why when we go to you, the grocery you store. Just, all right, I'm taking it all this. Can you just say that last line again so it sticks for my, because I, I, I need a second to process it. Thanks. Every dollar that the government spends in their budget that is over budget. So right now, I think they're about $9 trillion over budget per year. Every dollar the government spends over budget is money created out of thin air that did not previously exist. And then the government uses those dollars to give to their benefactors, whoever's paying to get them elected. And then their benefactors go out and purchase goods on the free market. Maybe they purchase steel, maybe they purchase wood, maybe they purchase houses, maybe they purchase farmland, right? 
But those dollars are being injected into the economy and purchasing goods away from me and you, right? How are we supposed to buy a house if BlackRock just gets a trillion dollar grant from the government and all we have is $100,000 for a down payment? Who's going to win that house in the bidding war, right? Give me BlackRock. So that's a newly printed, created out of thin air money that is now competing against mine and your dollars that are sitting in our savings account. They didn't have to work for it. They just printed it out of thin air. It is counter money. Um, it's just the government's allowed to do it because they control the printing press. 